My name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. I am here in my now fully upgraded tracking station, and I am tracking asteroids. Ooh, there's a Type E, one of the big ones. I don't have a contract for this yet, but I thought it would be best to just sort of get ahead of the curve and start tracking some of these things. The reason why they're disappearing, by the way, once I start tracking them is because I don't have the tracked asteroids actually selected. I find that the this view gets too busy when I have everything selected, especially once all these asteroids are involved. Um, in the meantime, we do have a couple of missions coming your way. A little later, we're going to be relaunching the Cursed Stock 5 with Bartner and his tourist aboard. That was the mission that we were forced to abort in a rather spectacular and explodey sort of way. So we're going to be trying that again, though it turns out we do get more explosions, though it's not quite what you would think. But before we get to that, uh, I think the Karain is just about set to make its third excursion out of low Kerbin orbit. At the conclusion of the last episode, the Kerbin station had just received its newest visitors, uh, Bill and Carol. Uh, it was a little bit of an adventurous journey, but nonetheless a successful one. And now that they are here, we can get ready for the mission. The next mission for the Karain, which is going to be to go into a polar lunar orbit to collect some science. And the first part of this is to get the crew for the mission aboard the Karayan. So we're going to transfer Glafia over to the station. Yeah, sorry Glafia, but it's going to be Bill that's going to be the engineer for this mission. And by the way, the reason why it's Bill is because this will put Bill up to level two, the uh, three points that he'll achieve for achieving an orbit around the moon, while Glafia would still remain level one. So we're, we're going to get more by transferring Bill uh, by using Bill for this mission, and as well, our scientist Carol will also be an important part of this mission, and Jebediah will stay on the Karayan as the Karayan's pilot. And uh, you might be noticing here that uh, actually Glafia and Carol have exactly the same texture. That's not from lack of options for textures, but you might recall way back when I first rescued them, they actually, just by coincidence, happened to have the same texture, and I said that they were going to be twins for the rest of this series, so I'm keeping to that. And yes, uh, Glafia and Carol are twins, reunited again, well, briefly, uh, aboard the Kerbin station. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll move some of this inventory stuff around. So we're going to open up all four of our Kerbinauts inventories, and uh, we'll give uh, Bill the uh, pipe endpoints. It's not, you know, I got so much in the habit of always sticking these pipe endpoints on the exterior of the ship, but you can actually store stuff now on the interiors of the ship. That's that's great. So Bill will just carry the pipes in case, I don't know why he'll need them, but in case he needs them. And we'll transfer the explosives that were brought up with the Karayan. Uh Yeah, we'll have some fun with these later. <laughs> um, but we're going to we're gonna give these explosives to, uh, to Glafia in the station because... Yeah, I don't really see why we need to have explosives anywhere else. And I'll get into what the explosives are about later. Anyway, after just a quick check to make sure that the Karayan is indeed completely stocked up with fuel and life support, it was time to go. Now, transfers to the moon are things you've seen lots of in this particular series. Nothing particularly special about this, though. Because I'm going into a polar orbit... My transfer burn is a little bit different because what I'm going to be doing is aiming to try and hit the moon smack dab in the middle. Now, don't worry about that because obviously my plan is not to hit the moon, but to go into a polar orbit. So we're going to use a mid-course correction burn to pull my trajectory to the south uh, to try uh, to get it into the uh, polar trajectory, that inclination of 90 degrees that I want. And I can see I overcooked this just a little bit, so I got to kind of fix this correction burn a little bit, uh, take a little bit of little retrograde, should bring this back, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it, and that looks pretty, pretty much uh, straight north-south to me. And it was shortly after that burn was complete that we got this notification that another battery has short-circuited. I mean, geez, where do they get these batteries from? They must be picking them up at a dollar store or something like that. It's ridiculous how often these things short-circuit. Anyway, we send out Bill to go fix it, but then we get this notification that the battery is right now too hot to fix. 
which quite frankly is really weird. Uh, it's been a while since the Korion has gone through the atmosphere or anything like that. I don't think the burn, you know, the firing the engines, you get the battery that hot. Probably it's just from the curse stock coming up, I guess. I know, I know in KSP right now that the, the heat transfer between parts just does not work right. And it seems to be particularly a problem with small parts. So apparently that's supposed to be dealt with in 1.1. But for now, we'll leave this alone, give this thing a chance to cool down and head on out. And also, once we got ourselves into high space around Kerbin, the notification to take another pressure scan in a vacuum comes up again. Doesn't make sense to me, but I'll take it. And once we got out into the moon's sphere of influence, well, there was another pressure scan for us to read in a vacuum. Uh, but, you know, 21.6 science, uh, you know I'll take it, whether I'm going to complain about it or not. And then it was time to take a look at our trajectory past the moon, and I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with my eyeballing. I got a periapsis of 14 kilometers and an inclination of 90.2 degrees. I don't think I have to change anything. All we got to do is uh, circularize a periapsis, and then we're ready to do some science scrounging. But before we get to that, it's time to join partner and selfie back at the KSC. Yeah, it's a nice, pretty sunset launch, and oh, a battery is just sort circuited. You know, I'm really convinced this is happening entirely too frequently. Um, it, it, it just shouldn't happen as much as it is, and I think I'm starting to become suspicious that it may be connected to the heating bug that really seems to affect small parts, especially small parts that have lots of other parts attached to them. Um, there is a heating bug in 1.04 that is apparently going to be addressed in 1.05, which I just learned is going to be released fairly soon before we go to 1.1. That's a lot of one points. So I hope that will deal with all of these battery short circuit. Anyway, I do have a contract in here somewhere. Uh, it's Selfie. Selfie is supposed to go suborbital. She's a tourist. And I am planning on getting into an orbit, but, you know, at some point I have to be suborbital before I'm orbital, right? Doesn't that make sense? I think it makes sense. Anyway, uh, I do have a second... Oh, wait, there's my contract. Anyway, I do have a secondary mission here too, and that is to rendezvous with Duna 1. Now, Duna 1 is in an 80 kilometer orbit and normally what I would do is actually launch I can't get into much of a lower orbit than that so normally what I do is I'd log into a higher orbit and position myself ahead of Duna 1 and let Duna 1 catch up to me um but I thought I would try something a little bit different I thought I would try also putting this into an 80 kilometer orbit and I have a particular maneuver in mind to rendezvous with Duna 1 hopefully more efficiently Unfortunately, I completely messed up the timing of my ascent, and I ended up uh, well behind Duna 1 when I should be for this maneuver a little bit ahead of Duna 1. So I apologize. I'll have to try it again some other time. So it's not going to work this time around, and it's going to be a long time to keep going around and catch back up to Duna 1. So I thought, you know... I can get myself to the Kerbin Station a little bit more quickly. So why don't I get myself up to Kerbin Station first, pay us a little bit of visit to uh, Glafia there. She's there all by herself. And, and then I'll bop down to Duna 1. That maneuver, however, won't occur for another three hours. So uh, I'd best get myself back out to the Korion and perform its circularization about the moon. So we are just under five minutes away from periapsis. Ooh, the camera's starting to spin around as we're obviously coming over the south pole. It's always an indication you're right on the pole when the camera does that. And oh, oh, we must have just gotten into near space because we got ourselves another pressure scan and an EVA report. An EVA report is over the moon's polar lowlands. That's the main reason I'm here for these EVA reports. In fact, the moon has 15... Oh, we got another EVA report. Better get that one. And this one, over the poles. Excellent. Still got a little less than four minutes to periapsis, so still time to maybe see if we get any more of these. There are a total of 15 biomes around the moon. And we're going to transmit some of these things as well, but I think what I'll do... Oh, well. Yeah, we'll wait until uh, 
until we, we have uh, circularized and got ourselves into a stable orbit, and then we'll do some of that transmitting. Yeah, like I was saying, there are 15 biomes that are in the moon, and I want to get EVA reports over every last one of them. So we're going to need to keep track of them, or I'm going to need to keep track of them as I do them. But of course, the first thing we're going to do is, is get ourselves circularized um, and into this nice polar orbit. And then, you know, being in the polar orbit, of course, uh, as the moon rotates below you, you will pass over every single one of the biomes eventually. The moon does rotate very slowly. There we go. And with that accomplished, uh, we'll get ourselves ready to see if we can catch ourselves some more biomes. So we'll turn off the uh, rendezvous part of Kerbal Engineer. And oh, oh, wait, I got another EVA report to do. Okay. This time it's the moon's twin craters. So twin craters that time. Put us back in. Okay, let's try and turn off that rendezvous indicator again. So I just want the surface data because that gives me what biome I'm over, which might help a little bit. And let's do some transmitting here. So I'm just checking to see what my communication link is like. Thanks to all those communication satellites that now have around the moon, the communication link is pretty stable, but uh, let's do some transmitting. So we'll go review some data and yes, let's transmit that. Here we go. 21.6 science. We won't transmit. Uh, high over Kerbin. Okay, we won't transmit that one for now. High over the moon. Nope, that's not transmit. Cause we, okay, polar lowlands will transmit that. So I'll transmit all the ones that are EVA reports. And it was after grabbing my next one over the northwest crater that I realized I need to be more systematic than this. So I uh, bopped on over to the KSC and got into the Research and Development Center. And from there I went to the Science Archives. I want to check to make sure, see what biomes I actually have. So Kerbin, go to the moon, and uh, I'm looking for... Where is it here? EVA reports. That's really what I'm interested in. There they are. EVA reports. Click on those. I have been to the moon before. A number of episodes ago, I did a flyby of the moon and collected EVAs over a number of the biomes. So I do have a respectable list. So what I did is I went over to the, the Kerbal Space Program wiki and looked up the list of biomes that the moon has and basically just went down this list and started crossing off the ones that I have. I see that the Moon's northwest crater there is dark. It, it's not filled in. That's because I believe I just got it and haven't transmitted it yet. That's all that is. And I ended up with this list of uh, six biomes that I still need to get. The northern basin, the polar crater, the canyons, the far side crater, the east crater, and the southwest crater. So I, I bopped on back out to the Karayan and thought I would use this moon map that... Uh, comes from ScanSat. I've been busily scanning the moon, uh, trying to identify features. You can see the Karayan there in its orbit, it just north of the uh, twin craters. The blue line, blue dotted line, represents its current orbit. It's going north and it's going to come south. And I'm pretty sure this here is the polar crater. I'm pretty sure it's going to come right over that. And then we have, I'm pretty sure that's the northern basin. After that, I'm not so confident about what different things are. But the blue dots you see are is the Korion's current orbit that it has ahead of it. The orange dot is the orbit that it has behind it. So you can see that the orbit is slowly moving to the west of the map. Uh, and it moves slowly because the moon takes six days to rotate around. And I could see that the orbit was going right over the polar crater, so I time warped to that, picked that one up easily enough. And then it turned out that the feature that's a little bit to the south of the polar crater is the far side crater with that sort of vertical line going up being the canyon. So I was able to pick up those two as well. That only left me with the northern base and the east crater and the southwest crater, but I could see from the map, I wasn't quite sure which feature was which. I mean, I know where the northern basin is, and I think this feature down here might be the southwest crater. Not entirely sure what is the east crater. Maybe that guy? 
I, I don't know. And you know, there is a device that comes with ScanSat that allows you to scan biomes and produce biome maps, but I haven't unlocked it yet. You can get those maps off the internet easy enough, but I thought, you know what, no, I should work with the images that I have. So I think I'm going to stick with this. But uh, I can see no matter what, I, it's going to be a little while before I'm able to catch an EVA over any other biomes, no matter what they are. So, uh... So I think I'll go back to the KSC and see what I can do with the science that I have already transmitted. Unfortunately, with my uh, 188 science, I could only unlock one tech node, and I decided, after much deliberation, to go with specialized construction um, because, like, I got these big containers, but I got a whole periphery of docking ports, some extra pretty cool-looking docking ports that come with uh, homegrown rockets and some of those KAS struts, they're coming along for the ride too. And I really want to get into some more orbital construction and work on my space station. And speaking of which, why don't we cut on ahead to Rodbart and Selfie as they are on their final approach to that very space station. And, oh, oh crap! I still have the escape tower on this thing and it's blocking the docking port. I can't dock with this. And I don't want to decouple the escape tower because then it'll be debris floating around in orbit. I should have decoupled that while I was still suborbital during my ascent. Oh, man. Wait a minute. Oh, double crap. I, this thing doesn't even have RCS on it. I'd have trouble docking it anyway. I thought I, I, thought I put the new better curse dock into the building queue. Obviously, I didn't. This is still the old version with no RCS and... Oh man, because part of what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually dock this and leave a decent descent vehicle or, you know, uh, orbital, orbiter uh, at the station for the people that were crewing the station. And this one's just as crappy as the one that I have connected to it. <sighs> okay, change in plans. We're going to conduct an experiment, the best kind of experiment, one that involves explosives. Recently, I brought up some KIS explosive charges up to the station that I've recently unlocked, and I have really no idea how to work them. So we're going to find out. And we're going to bring the curse dock, and we're going to bring it alongside, though not too close for reasons that you're going to see in a second. And then we're going to get Bartner to go out, and Bartner's going to go over there and pick up some explosives, but, but first, he's going to pick up this extra antenna that seems to be on the curse dock, because once again, I believe I had two time symmetry going in the vehicle assembly building, so he'll just add this to this rather embarrassing collection of extra parts that are already being connected to the station. And then he's going to visit Glafia inside the station, and other than this being a social call and saying hello to a fellow engineer, um... Partner's also interested in picking up, well, a little smidge of explosives here. So we'll get Bartner back towards the curse dock, get him safely inside, and then we're going to turn the curse dock away from the uh, station, and we're going to decouple the escape tower and see if we cannot use these explosives to remove the debris in a little bit more of a fun way. And now Bartner's job is going to be to chase this thing down and see if we cannot use some explosives to get rid of this debris. Now, if you don't mind, I am going to do a quick save here because I really don't know what I'm doing and explosions on purpose is not something I'm quite used to. But the first difficulty I discovered pretty quickly was that the explosive charge does not want to stick to this escape tower and I really think it is actually the escape tower I think the escape tower won't allow pieces to be attached radially to it at all so what I ended up doing was just sort of laying the charge kind of nearby and seeing how that worked okay so activate <laughs> get the hell out of here oh I noticed there was a setup maybe I should have taken a look at that because I really have no, there's no counter or anything going down. I have no idea when this will go off. Oh, I hate this. Ah, Jesus Christ. Holy crap. Wow. That ain't safe. <laughs> uh, it's gone. I do not see any debris, but oh my goodness. 
Wow. Oh, we're going to have to do that again sometime. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, let's get Bartner back to the safety of the curse stock. Remember, they do still have a mission to perform. Another one, and that now they're them blowing things up. And someone might be noticing, by the way, as they bring him back. You know, they might be thinking, you know, you could, you weren't going to dock with it anyway. Couldn't you have just left the escape tower connected to the vessel and descend and then, you know, detach the escape tower on your descent? Yeah, but honestly, wasn't that more fun? <laughs> anyway, the other mission they got to perform is to rendezvous with Duna 1 and fix a battery that short-circuited. What else is new? Short-circuiting battery seems to be par for the course. Uh, but that rendezvous is not going to be coming for another five and a half hours. So I think I'm going to have to save that for the next episode. But before I wrap this particular episode up, I do have one quick thing to show you. This is ComSat-1, which you have seen before. It's one of three communication satellites in orbit around the moon that I have been tweaking and playing with their orbits over the past few episodes. And right now, its phase angle is about 239 degrees. That's close enough. I only need it to be 240. So what I'm doing here is I'm burning mostly radially out with a smidge of retrograde to bring down its orbital period. And what I'm trying to do is raise the periapsis and lower the apple and thus lowering the eccentricity so I have this orbit reasonably close to being a circle and with a couple of extra puffs I have things pretty close to the way I want them so let's take a look at what we got okay let's take a look here let's turn off the targeting so we don't have all the extra information. So that's ComSat 1 down there in the bottom. Let's put on the communication line so we can see that. It's looking all right. Again, I'm shooting for an equilateral triangle. Over there, there's JunkSat 2. That's JunkSat 3. JunkSat 3's phase angle with ComSat 2 is a little bit too low. So I've actually have sped up its orbit. It's about 10 degrees off. But even with that, it's looking, it's looking all right. And it's providing pretty much continual, it is continual communication coverage all over and in and around the moon. Anyway, I think that's going to have to end this particular episode. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.